Hey, what's up guys? Tolerant Madman here with something that I want to start doing, which is going to be videos that have kind of a hot take or just explore a certain concept that I want to look into. And the very first one is, uh, I imagine, a very hot take, which is I don't think a video game should ever be hard. And this is an opening some kind of conspiracy with like the journalists that wanted to, that had to hack the game Sekiro Shadows Die Twice to beat the game. But I think hard is a relative term. That's a fact. And for people at the top and the bottom, the virtual difficulty that they're experiencing is different. And I want to have a more universal term to describe games such as difficult, which if you do look into some of the definitions of hard, it can, one of them is difficult to understand or solve. And while that is true, I don't want to use the word hard because if I go to, say, a professional at the game, say, for Apex, I go to ASU. If I ask them if they think the game is hard, while they might just say, yeah, game's hard, they also might just say, no, I don't find the game to be hard. Especially in, like, chess, you'll find some grandmasters who go, well, the game's not hard for them, so is the game hard? Is And how do we define hard? Whenever we're referring to difficulty, we, we just go by the masses by the select few, by the people struggling at the bottom to understand the base concepts. And a lot of people will point to games such as Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, such as Dark Souls, such as Hades, such as Binding of Isaac, different kinds of games, but they'll point to them and they'll say, look, here's a game that's hard. Here's people who say it's hard. While those are hard games, I would, ra I would wager to say those are learnable games. Games that once you learn the concepts, the basic controls, or even all the way up to the advanced controls, you're not encountering a hard game anymore. You're encountering something that's very predictable, very easy. Meanwhile, with other games that introduce even more random mechanics, they're now making it actually hard. It's impossible to cope. It's impossible to deal with. And it will cause issues across the board for everyone from the top to the bottom. And I don't think any game should be that way. Because once you start playing a video game, the one thing that you are seeking is the ability to be good at said video game. To be able to be at least proficient enough that you're not having any kind of major issues with the game. Say like beating a game. You, that Some people have to use that as the optic as to whether they're good at the game or not good at the game or whether they've mastered the game slash not mastered the game. Other people use perfecting a game, getting all the achievements slash trophies slash Steam achievements. I don't know. I don't play on a PC. Other people may see it as building up a layer of proficiency or a level of proficiency that surpasses all the people that they know who play the game or becoming some of the best in the world. Some people like... Overwatch, uh, Overwatch Pro League, uh, they would probably consider mastering, winning, and becoming the best in the world at said game or said role in that game, of course. And it's impossible to do that in something that's actually hard. Hard applied across the board where everyone would say the game is hard. Because something that is hard is relative. Diamonds are hard. They're not the hardest. So sand is soft and, and sli silty. It's not the softest. It's not the siltiest. All of these are just comparative to one another and can't be used broadly across the board. But if the word hard is able to be applied broadly across the board, then I think that's a major failing on the developer's part. And most, while well, I don't think many games reach this level where the game is just hard, I think that a lot of them try to reach this and implement mechanics that try to reach this. And I think that is a major step back in gaming. One game that I can point to with 100% uh, certainty as a game that is learnable but difficult would be a game such as For Honor, where the difficulty and the quote-unquote hard aspect of the game is going up against another player who's going to read your movements. Now, what would make it just hard, air quotes hard, instead of learnable and able to be mastered, is if the enemy just had significantly more health than you. 
in, uh, infinitely so more health. Do they aware if they hit you once, you would instantly die and you have to hit them a hundred times for them to take half their health and damage. That is just making it hard. You're just making it hard. You're not, you're not making it difficult. And this is often referred to as artificially and in, artificially increasing the difficulty. The reason why it's referred to as artificially is because this is not a natural progression of difficulty. You haven't introduced me to the core mechanics scaled those core mechanics up to different encounters, introduced new aspects to them. You're just difficult, sudden, instant, unavoidable, and un uh, unovercomable. Is that a word? Don't know. Un unsurpassable. You cannot get to a point in that where you are good enough to say this isn't hard anymore. And I think games always need to avoid that. You'll see in some games like Diablo... Or some games like Borderlands with Borderlands 3 with, I think it was called the Mayhem system, where you're just making it harder. You're not making it more difficult. You're just making it harder, as, we, as I've defined previously. And I think one of the best aspects that I saw in, say, Hades, there have the Pact, which is something you're able to change the difficulty of the game by tweaking this or that, enemies have increased health, enemies have increased attack speed, yada, yada, yada. One of them is called the uh, extreme measures, and I think that was the best instance of increasing difficulty without just making it harder. What it does is it introduces a new aspect to a boss fight. It doesn't just give the boss more health. It doesn't just change up a little bitty thing. It changes up a, an extremely difficult core mechanic of the, of the boss fight encounter. With the very first one, with Meg the, Hyde, with Meg the Fury, it introduces a, a way to mix and match the Furies. Instead of, at the very beginning, you'll fight just Meg, and then Tisiphone, then Alesto, El Alesto? I can't pronounce it, I'm sorry. I'll put it up, my editor will put it up on screen. You're able to fight just one of them, and it'll cycle between them. I don't know if there's any kind of... I think it's just random. I don't think there's any kind of, uh, like, core thing that you're, you can predict which one it's going to be. The extreme measures for that makes it to where it'll be two of them, or all three of them, with one of them being the forward and uh, the other two being support, or just one of them being the forward and the other being support. And it changes it up constantly to where you'll have to go quite a few rounds before you even get a repeat. Uh, quite a few runs before you even get a repeat. For the Learny fight, instead of just doing that exact same thing, because it does cycle the Hydras into different, different Hydras with different attacks and different projectiles, it instead changes up the entire boss fighting arena. And then with the third one, it changes up... Uh, Asterius and Theseus, it changes up their core move set, making it to where they'll have different moves instead of introducing, instead of changing the boss fighting arena, and instead of changing who you're fighting. Those are perfect ways of making it to where the game is more difficult, but not artificially scaling the difficulty by just giving them double health or just giving them double damage. This, I think, is the perfect step forward for this. There are quite a few games that do this, but that was just one of the big, biggest, most shining examples of it. And I think Dark Souls kind of does this, but they do, and I'm a big fan of Dark Souls. I've gotten all the achievements in all three of the games. I, uh, did, I got all the achievements in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and I'm going to talk about uh, Sekiro in a second. One of the biggest things in Dark Souls is New Game Plus, which kind of just has the enemies do more damage and has you, uh, I don't think it scales, yeah, it doesn't scale your damage in any way. What that makes you have to do is play better. And that's just not like get good, scrub, any, any stupid shit like that. It makes it to where you have to just dodge their attacks more. It kind of makes the enemies more of a bullet sponge, but that is a game where I don't feel like, like it's say in Borderlands, if they did it in Borderlands, it's kind of impossible to dodge an enemy's gun. You can't just dodge their bullets. Meanwhile, in Dark Souls, it's just you have to play at this certain level, dodging and attacking, dodging and attacking. The new game pluses just make it to where you have to play at that level longer. It just makes it to where you have to play that way a little bit more. Dodge a few more attacks and keep on doing the damage. It keeps it solid, nice, good base. Whenever I played Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3... Three being the very first one I played. I played the entire... Actually, I didn't even play it ass backwards. I played three, one, two. 
So, ooh, kind of kind of weird. I struggled, of course, in my first playthrough in each of the games. Playing the first two games or playing the third or third game of the first game and going into the second game, I had no advantage from those two other games or no no such advantage that made it to where the game is just a breeze and I walked right through it. I still struggled. But I struggled the most on New Game. I didn't struggle the most on New Game Plus 1 or New Game Plus 2 or New Game Plus 3. In Dark Souls 3 specifically, I do believe that's the one where you have, to get a certain ring, you have to go all the way to New Game Plus 3 or Plus 4. And I would say I didn't struggle there. I struggled in the very beginning. And I think that's one of the best ways or one of the best examples of a game being difficult. You have to learn it. But asking the top people in the game, they'll go, no, it's not hard. You just learn. You won't have a game that I, in my opinion, is good if everyone on the spectrum from pro player to, to noob all say it's a hard game. At that point, you've just made something that's it's just difficult to deal with. Not difficult in the sense that it's, you feel great pride and accomplishment in completing it. You've just made it hard. And I think that that's a big step back. Uh, Sekiro, which is one often pointed to even by people who play Dark Souls religiously, they can point to that and say it's a hard game. I think it disguises itself as a hard game. I've had, I have a quite a few friends who've also played the Dark Souls series, and I introduced them to Sekiro, and they just go, this is just ridiculous, this is just stupid, this is just hard. It's not just hard, they're disguising it as hard. Because if you're coming from Dark Souls, one thing that the creators have even said, the first couple of bosses, the first couple of mini-bosses, the first encounters, all of those are designed in a way to massively discourage the play style you'd be trying to import from Dark Souls to Sekiro. So if you're coming from Dark Souls to Sekiro, you might even be at more of a disadvantage than if you were just picking up Sekiro and had never even heard of Dark Souls or didn't even know anything about that series because it's actively discouraging the entire play style you've developed throughout your time playing Dark Souls and wanting you to adopt this new play style instead, making it to where it just seems like the game is hard. One of the best, one of the best enemies, not enemies, bosses in Sekiro, I think that points to this would be the uh, Lady Butterfly, who if you're trying to play her like she's a Dark Souls boss, you're dead. She's going to easily wipe you. But if you play her like a Sekiro boss, you're not going to even struggle. I think you can kill her in like 30, 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And I, coming from the Dark Souls games, of course made it past the Ogre, made it past all of this, got to her, and I still hadn't fully shaken that playing it like it's a Dark Souls boss. Because you can kind of cheese the other ones in such a way. This was one of the first big roadblocks that showed me that this game isn't hard, it's learnable. That I have to change the way that I, look, I view this game, the lens that I view this game through, and then it'll just snap. It'll come together. Because people often say, get good. It'll say it if you're playing Apex. It'll say it if you're playing Siege. If you're playing God of War. If you're playing uh, Hades. If you're playing Roguelikes. Uh, playing Skyrim on the highest difficulty. Playing Diablo. Playing... Dark Souls, Sekiro, all of these, you'll get people that just say, get good. Or it'll just come to you. I think it'll just come to you is the far nicer way of saying it, but it's saying the same thing. It's saying to develop these skills, just, just do it. And people don't understand until you just do it why it's the way that you describe it. You just do it. Eventually, you'll look back and you'll realize... Sometimes you'll have that pivotal moment where you can say it just clicked and in others you'll just slow it'll slowly come over time and you won't even notice the changes until you look back at the beginning and go wow I wasn't doing well and now I'm doing this that's crazy Certain games like Sekiro I can easily say with the uh when you learn the lightning reversal in a certain fight that's an old and that's not really an old game but i don't want to spoil it anyway when you learn the lightning reversal and you use it on the final boss for the non-shura ending that's that's when i can say and that's the that's the end of the game that's when i can say that the game fully clicked for me and then my new game plus one two three and i think i had to go to four to get all the endings because i didn't want to start a new save file i wasn't about it 
I, it was all easy after that because that one moment it makes you realize you got it. You're able to read your enemy's move set. You're able to understand what attack is about to come. You've learned the game. It's not difficult anymore. You're just, it's like chess. You know what they're going to do and you just have to counter it. There's no difficulty anymore. This is, this is just one plus one and two is the outcome of you winning. And I feel like every game should be this way. I don't feel like any game should artificially ramp up the difficulty by, say, Dark Souls 2 is often criticized for just artificially increasing the difficulty. And people will often point to it as the worst Dark Souls game because of that. And yeah, I, I actually, it's one, of my, it's one of my favorites, favorite games ever. And I would have to say, just story-wise, boss-wise, not really weapon-wise, I really love the weapon arts. I can get into a different video about that. It is the weakest because... Yeah, it just artificially increased the difficulty. Like the uh, the Dragon Slayer, no? The Throne Taker? I can't remember. I think it is the Dragon Slayer. The, one of the first bosses you encounter in Dark Souls 2, later in the game, you just encounter two of them. The Gargoyles fight from Dark Souls 1, which is seen as such a great fight, where you fight them uh, one at a time. Or you, yeah, you just fight the Belf Belfry Gargoyle. In the second game, they just throw a bunch at you. With the Sentinels, they just throw a bunch of them at you. And it's just kind of, you kind of like shake your head and you start wondering, why are you, why are you doing this? Why don't you just make a harder boss rather than making it to where I'm in fighting like two or three bosses? Meanwhile, in Dark Souls 1, they did a, a not a gank fight. They did a two-on-one fight that was good, or a one-on-two from your perspective. That was good, Ornstein and Smo. But they never tried to recapture or rekindle that fire in their fights that were more than one on one on one in the second game, just kind of throwing multiple of them at you. And instead of making the game more difficult, they just made it hard. They did just artificially increase the difficulty. And I think the natural progression in difficulty is what makes the dark souls game so good. And why dark souls two was seen as the worst where they would just artificially ramp it up by throwing more enemies at you. That's really all I have to say. Uh, if you like this kind of content, I'm going to keep doing it uh, as the as the hot takes come to me. I'll start talking about start talking about them. Uh, if you want to like the video, subscribe. That's up to you. Uh, go visit me on Twitch if you want to see some live gameplay, and I'll see you in the next one.